Okay, I'm recording now, so everybody behave, behave yourselves because this is being documented. Again, thanks to the folks who just joined in. I'm John Ross, the principal at Lionville. For those I haven't met yet, um, we're very, very excited. We've got about, it uh, looks like we've got about 18, 17, 18 guests that have joined us. Uh, we're gonna go through introductions and, uh, and our, our whole plan for this evening uh, in just a moment. Just gonna wait like another minute or two before we get started, if you can just bear with us. All right, uh, Dr. Henry, Ms. Lear, if you can keep an eye on uh, the guests, the waiting room, in case anybody else attempts to join, um, I'd appreciate it. Okay, so good evening, folks. I'm John Ross, uh, principal at Lionville Middle School. Uh, thank you so, so much. Uh, I know it's a busy time of year. I know there's a lot going on. Um, you know, I, I kind of ran this idea uh, past uh, our assistant principals a, a week, a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's been the one thing that, you know, I, I've come to realize uh, that we haven't really spent enough time addressing, you know, throughout this entire uh, COVID situation, we've been so focused on uh, your children. And I hope that comes across. We, we've been paying so much attention to, you know, trying to make sure we're doing everything we can to connect with your children. Um, and we're spending a lot of time look, focusing on our teachers as well, to be quite honest, and our staff. and you know, taking care of their mental and physical health. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I realized, man, that's what's missing. Like we just, you know, typically during a year, during a regular year, when whether it's at concerts or home and school meetings or, you know, parent conferences or whatever, like you're in the building, right? You're in and out and we're stopping and having conversations. And it, it, we, we've missed that. We, we have missed you. We really, really have. And, um, so, so we decided that we would try to do something uh, to reach out in case there's anybody that misses us too. <laughs> I didn't wanna be you know, so presumptuous to think that you did miss us, but in case there was anybody that you know, is sitting there and uh, parents, I gotta tell you, especially Lionville Middle School parents, uh, many of you are, are way too patient and are way too happy to, not happy, are, are way too satisfied to just suffer in silence and, and think, Oh, uh, it'll get better, or we'll work a little harder, or we'll do a little bit more. And you know, we really want you to see us a, as a resource and a place to go to uh, for this kind of support. So, uh, having the conversation uh, amongst our administrative team, um, we decided that we would try to do uh, something virtual like this. And um, we've kind of gotten good at this. It's the one upside, I guess, uh, of the whole COVID situation is that with everything being virtual. Uh, we've become accustomed to uh, having to present things in this fashion. While it's not necessarily what we would want to do, we've gotten used to it. So let me just go through a couple of ground rules if I can. Um, not necessarily rules, but just little pieces of, of information for you. Um, as I said, I am recording this. So if at any point you need to leave, you have somewhere to go, you lose internet connection, whatever reason, uh, I, I am going to try to make this available later. Um, or if there's something that we talk about that you miss, I move the slides too fast or whatever, you should be able to view this later on. Uh, there is a chat feature. If you kind of explore a little bit, if this is your first time uh, on Zoom, uh, there should be a little menu bar um, at the bottom of your screen, I think. Uh, it's at the top of my screen, but I think that's because I'm hosting. Um, where you can unmute your microphone, please don't do that right now. Um, and where you can also chat, where you can type in questions. Now, I have to tell you, in the midst of talking, I very frequently, infrequently look at the chat. But if you do type something in there, uh, one of us will try to address it at some point, either right away in the chat we'll reply to you, um, or we'll try to you know, speak about it um, as we're going through the presentation, okay? So there's a, a number of uh, LMS folks that have joined us tonight. 
Um, oh, and the last thing I want to say, if you do have questions, you know, we, the, the very ending of this, we, we've allotted for time to uh, address questions. So I, I prefer to try to move through this, but I, I also want this and to be very- the microphone off. Oh, microphone off? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Uh, see, we, this is what you get used to. Um, we do want it to be organic. So, you know, if, if there's something that um, you'd really like to ask, uh, there, there, if you know how to raise the hand feature or if you know how to unmute your microphone, um, I will try to allow for a little bit of wait time before I move on from slide to slide. But again, I'm not married. I'm not going to do death by PowerPoint here and read each and every slide to you out loud. I'm, I'm going to try and just speak to what you're looking at. Um, and I'm going to ask the others that have joined me to, to do so as well. Okay, so as far as our actual formal presentation, uh, yeah, I have myself, um, uh, Ms. Lear, Dr. Henry, our two assistant principals. Uh, Mr. Kirby is our school psychologist um, who's joined us. I also believe I saw Mr. Wells, who's one of our counselors, uh, Ms. Webb, who's our nurse, and uh, Mr. Fox, I think, is the only teacher, unless other teachers have joined, and I'm sure they'll let me know if there's other teachers here as well. Um, oh, and I see Mrs. Swisher's in the waiting room, so Mrs. Swisher will be joining us in a moment, too. And then we have a special guest with us tonight, uh, Holly O'Connell. Uh, we, we have a, a, a good relationship with a fantastic organization. We're very lucky in the Downingtown community to, to have this resource called A Path to Hope. And I'm going to let Holly talk about her organization in just a couple of minutes, um, but we're very excited to have her here with us tonight. And uh, she's going to talk to you about some of the things that, that uh, her, her organization can offer to you. So in thinking about what we were going to be doing, uh, as I said, and as I showed you in the emails, we, we were focusing on the mental, the physical, and the social well-being uh, of your children. And that's something I say in all modesty that I believe we do an outstanding job of at Lionville Middle School prior to March 13th of 2020, at least we were doing an outstanding job of that. Um, and that with everything that's happened since March, uh, this has been a struggle for us. And, and as I said earlier, our primary focus in the beginning was trying to figure out how we, the school, could address these three areas in a virtual world. And what I'm hoping tonight that you can get something out of this about how you can find out how we can help you, what, what services we can provide to you, and who are some of the outside organizations and outside agencies that can provide that assistance as well, okay? So here's the three areas, and I'm gonna spend time, we're gonna spend time on each one of these. So you see a number of things here, um, and I'm go we're, we're gonna talk about all of these things, but when you have academics, there's a few things that we do, social, emotional, number of things that we do, and then the physical well-being of our kids um, is obviously a, a big one right now. I mean, it's always been big, but especially, uh, with, with everybody being connected all the time, uh, kids have lost out a little bit on, you know, they, they don't have the outside club sports and things that they've played or, or our interscholastic athletics that they've done in the past. So uh, we're going to talk about some of the things that, that can happen to, to help with those. All right. So primarily academic support. So uh, uh, my, my other friends here who are speaking, I'm going to speak about the first one. And then if anybody uh, wants to speak about the other ones, you know, feel free to go ahead. But Here's the strength of middle school, in my opinion, and this is why I've always loved middle school. This is why I've spent the entire 28 years of my career working in middle schools, teaming. The, the teaming approach, the idea of making these smaller communities of learning, and, and there's a lot of middle schools out there that have teams, right? Air quotes, teams, and they're not really functioning as teams. And we're very, very fortunate in this district in that our school board and our central administration supports the notion of providing real teams. And one of the key parts to that is that the teachers have availability in their schedule to meet with you. And again, pre-COVID, we had to set up a time that worked for you and you maybe had to arrange childcare, you drive to the school, we'd all sit around in a conference room. Now with Zoom, like we're able to hit these meetings as much as we need to. But the teachers have availability in their schedule, four out of six school days, where they can meet with you. It's only virtually right now, but that's not so bad. You're, you're all here, so it's in a similar format to what you're seeing right now. Um, so if your child is struggling, if you see that academic or social emotional, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, 
But when you start to notice that struggle, when, you, when you're a parent, I say all the time that we have an instinct as parents. We know our children better than anyone. You know your children way better than we do, right? And when that instinct starts to go off that something's not right here, this isn't, we haven't seen this before, or we have seen it before, and this is what happened when we saw it before, and we really feel like, you know, this is when we need to reach out to the school. And again, so often, parents will say, oh, we didn't want to bother you. Yeah, we knew that he was falling behind. We knew that she really wasn't studying, but we figured it would fix itself. No, bother us. Like, that's, we want you to see that that's what we're here for. We're here to try to provide that kind of help and support to you. Um, and the use of reach, and, and that's been uh, kind of an enigma during my time at Lionville and even predating the 10 years that I've been at Lionville um, is what we use reach for. But again, th this time that we're experiencing now with COVID, I, I think we're learning just how important that time is. And that's a time that kids have in their schedule every day where they can connect with their teachers and get help get support, try to figure out what's wrong, where are the gaps? And that's a conversation, again, that you can have with your child and make sure they're taking advantage of that time. I cannot tell you how many kids, and I think Mr. Fox and, and any of the other teachers that were here would back me up, how many children we see that don't make use of that time. And, and it pains us to see because, you know, our teachers will try so hard, hey, you're sitting here in front of me for the last 15 minutes. I know you owe like three things for my class. Like, why aren't you working on those things? And, and it's, it's easy for them to fall into uh, a routine of not taking advantage of that. So that team setup uh, is incredibly, incredibly important and is really a key uh, to academic success, we believe, for kids at the middle level. Um, any, any of my other LMS folks want to chime in on any of these bullet points that you see here? Go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll piggyback on that. Um, you know, I, I Mr. Fox, introduce you. yourself. I'm sorry. <laughs> My name is Brian Fox. I'm a history teacher on the 1776ers, the 7D team. I'm also the team leader of the team. Um, I cannot emphasize how important uh, team time is. Um, you know, we have opportunities to sit down. We have an opportunity to sit down and discuss students, what some people are seeing in their classrooms, what other people are seeing in other classrooms. Um, and it's great. Uh, you know, we can see, you know, if, if, a, if a student is struggling across the board or, if, you know, in one classroom, a student is doing a fantastic job and maybe another classroom they're struggling, we can actually discuss, you know, what is working in that one classroom and what can we, you know, plan to make it work in the other classroom. And, uh, you know, just recently we came up to about the halfway point of the marking period and we sat down and, you know, we went through our students, we went through all of our lists together to see how students were do doing, excuse me. And uh, you know, we reached out uh, you know, to parents that were, had students that were struggling. And, and again, that's what you can do in a team atmosphere. Like we all work together. Uh, we're all, you know, and if we need to, we call people you know, in to have, to have Zoom meetings. It's fantastic, it really is. And please, I can't emphasize this enough. Uh, take advantage of it, absolutely take advantage of it. If you see that you have a student that is struggling or you just wanna speak with one teacher, um, you know, reach out, because um, we are here for you guys. Thanks, Mr. Fox. Any of our other LMS staff? You're all being shy. Um, so I'll take just a moment to talk about what you see there, academic intervention team, because that might be the one thing that um, when you're looking at that, you're like, what is that? So we have uh, a, a process in place where either if a parent uh, identifies an academic need, or if we, the school, identify an academic need, uh, we can begin to take a look at that student and, and look at their past history of academics and how they've, uh, how they've done and where they've struggled and, and what are they all about when it comes to their academics. And we can put things in place. You know, there's a, I think there's a misperception that you have to have an IEP or a, chapter, a 504 agreement in order to get things done to help your child that are kind of out of the norm. So for example, um, in this, we call it AIT. In, in this AIT process, uh, we'll try to do things like, you know, lightening a workload for a student, for example, or giving them a little bit more time to turn things in, or helping them organize themselves 
uh, on occasion, not as regular, not to the degree that you would get with an IEP, but the goal there is to try to see, are there little things, are there small efforts that we can make as a school that can help this student bridge that gap, bridge that divide? Or is the need so bad that we need to actually put interventions, identified interventions in place that would be through an IEP? It's the, the term, the lingo we use in education is the pre-referral process. This is kind of thought of as something you do before you think about special ed. And I, I think that is, you know, a lot of parents might get nervous about that because they're thinking, oh, they're trying to label my kid. And that's not it. We're just trying to find out if there's something more that we can do. And there's a lot of different, I'm not doing it justice. I could do a whole 30 minute presentation just on what AIT does. But this is a way to get your student support academically without going the, the, the route of getting them tested and, and seeing if they have an actual uh, academic identified need. Okay, um, homework club is something else that we offer. It's an after school club that we can tell you more about if you're interested. And then the last thing I just wanna say about this is administrator support. You know, when I was in school and, and I'm 51 years old, so go back that far. When I was in school, like we were definitely afraid of our principal, right? Never wanted to be anywhere near them. Just scared us to death. When I was in elementary school, my middle school principal is the reason I became a principal, totally different with him. And he's the reason I am the kind of principal I am now, because I don't want, and this, some people don't like this when I say it, but I don't want kids to be afraid to come to my office. I don't want kids viewing coming to me as a negative thing. I want them to see me, and I know uh, Ms. Lear and Dr. Henry feel the same way. I want them, to, we want them to view us as just another, like all that matters to me is that your kid has at least one person that they can go to in that building that there's at least somebody that they can go to that they feel comfortable talking to. So it's really awkward a lot of times because we'll try to talk to kids and try to interact with them. And they're so, you know, they're, they're a little nervous and why is the principal joking around with me and everything. But, you know, we really, really and truly want your children to see us as another layer of support that can be provided to them. Um, so, yeah, okay. Uh, anything about this before I move on, either from LMS or from any of our parents? Okay, if you think of anything, um, we'll have some time at the end uh, if, if any questions do come up, okay? Social and emotional wellness. So uh, again, going back to the teams and the, the foundation of middle school, the, our team events. Uh, one of the things our teams do, as many of you know, is they have team-wide activities, that there's things that take place that the whole team participates in, whether it's a field trip or it's, and again, I'm, I'm talking about pre-COVID, right, or activities where they all, you know, join in together and do something as a group. Now, since we've been in this pandemic, that's been like a big area that's taken a hit, and some of the teams have tried to overcome that by doing uh, uh, virtual or things that you can attend. I know Mr. Fox's team earlier in the year had a movie night where they out in the parking lot had like a big screen and um, you know parents showed up and we kept everybody socially distant from one another. Like teams are doing those things. Um, advisory is, I cannot stress enough how important advisory is. So we, we started advisory this year and, and it's a meeting that takes place once a cycle your child should know that they have somebody who's their advisor for advisory, that they're meeting with during reach once a cycle. Now, admittedly, it's been a struggle to get kids to show up to this, but the goal of this advisory is again, and I've got an advisory group, the, the principals all have them, the teachers all have them, and we break the kids down into smaller groups so we can be in a meeting like this together with you know one adult and like six or seven kids and just talk. What's going on? What are you struggling with? Anybody need help with anything? Just trying to give them another connection, another person that can be there to help them um, when needed. Uh, our counselors and prevention specialists are outstanding resources. They can connect you with uh, assistance both in the school and with outside agencies. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that in a moment. Um, uh, SAS, our, our student assistance program, 
Uh, that, that is what, what uh, that's a, a group of teachers that have been trained uh, in how to support uh, our, our students when it comes to social and emotional wellness. And I know Mrs. Swisher, maybe, uh, you know, if you want to interrupt me at any point, um, feel free. But uh, SAS is a group that meets, a group of teachers that meet, similar to the AIT group that I was talking about earlier, the academic intervention team that meets to talk about academics. This is a group that meets to talk about students that are having uh, social and emotional wellness. And again, you know about it. If your child is involved in this, this isn't some kind of secret thing where we're doing something behind your back. Like it's fully transparent. If your child is involved in this, um, it's something that you'd be aware of. Um, and then Avidium, again, Mrs. Swisher, uh, runs one of our clubs you see listed there. Really great um, way for kids to get connected with one another, to do some positive social and emotional stuff. They've hung, you know, uh, motivational signs around our hallway, some anti-bullying stuff, just kind of talking about a positive lifestyle and things that can be done. Anything from you, Mrs. Swisher, or no? No, I was just going to say with SAS, regarding SAS and making sure kids are, um, you know, referred, it's, it's, we're in a difficult situation and we're virtual. And so like parents are kind of uh, eyes and ears for us right now uh, with kids that we don't get to see every day that we would definitely uh, flag them as uh, a concern for SAS. So uh, I guess my only thought would be that, you know, parents just, uh, if you're thinking that your child is struggling, um, that you can refer your kid as well, because right now we're in a, a very interesting circumstance where we don't see them every single day in school. That's a great point. Thank you. And, and Mr. Kirby, um, I, I left you out when I was talking about the counselors and prevention specialists. Again, just like uh, we want the kids to view the principals as another person to go to, um, Mr. Kirby, our, our school psychologist, and, and Ms. Roth is our other school psychologist that we share with East, um, is not just somebody that sits in his office and, and tests students all day. I know Mr. Kirby wants to be seen as somebody that uh, kids can go to when, when they get to know him and somebody that they can rely on as well. Um, I hope I'm not volunteering you for something you didn't want me to, Mr. Kirby, but I did want to make sure I mentioned that. No, thanks, John. Um, yes, it, for parents too, uh, send me an email, give me a phone call. If there's something that you want to talk about um, that might be specific to your family and your student, I'm definitely here to consult with you. And same, you know, joining with Teams and AIT and all of the services we provide are just another resource for you to reach out to. Thanks, Andy. And, and what I want to say about clubs too, clubs are really, really important. And I don't want to list them all here um, because if you really want a list of the clubs that we have, you know, you just shoot me an email um, and I can send it to you. But what I say to the students and what we say to the kids all the time, if there's not a club that appeals to you, then start one. It's a relatively simple process. And I put a little bit of the responsibility on the kids, but not much. If they're interested in starting a club, if they want to do something and they don't see it, they have an interest that isn't being met here. Um, and then they're supposed to contact me and reach out to me and explain to me what it is they'd like to do. All I ask them to do is two things. Find a teacher that will be your advisor for the club. And if they don't, I'll help them with that. But I tell them that because I want them to take a little bit of initiative and make sure that you have at least nine other students that want to join the club as well. Again, if they wind up with eight, we're still going to do the club. But I want them to make sure that they have enough kids that are going to be with them. So it's not just them and the teacher sitting, you know, trying to run this club every day. Um, so we have everything, you know, from anime. Uh, our Patriots Club is really active. Um, there's a Dungeons and Dragons club. There's like just all sorts of things that kids are interested in that our teachers are, are happy to serve as advisors for and, and help provide to them. Um, so next thing I want to do is just introduce our guest again, Holly O'Connell. Um, Holly is a Downingtown resident. Uh, uh, her children graduated, well, uh, some of her children graduated from East High School. Um, and she started this organization called A Path to Hope a couple of years ago. And we were very, very fortunate uh, that we connected. Holly, I don't even remember how you and I connected with one another, um, but we did. And, and since that time, uh, they've been a, a great support to us when we have families that are looking for ways to connect uh, with resources in the community. So Holly, if uh, you want to unmute yourself and, and take a couple of minutes if you could, just to talk to our, our guests about what Path to Hope can do for them. Uh, I'm sure they'd appreciate it. And thank you so much. Mr. Ross has been a huge supporter of A Path to Hope and uh, 
my three kids did go through Lionville Middle School, so thankfully he doesn't know them too well because they weren't in there getting in trouble. But no, remember um, I said I don't I want know. to be cute as that guy, Holly. You're you're blowing That's right. the cover. I forgot I did blow that, but um, maybe they didn't appreciate your humor. Maybe that maybe was that's it. what it is. That was it. But um, a pat, I'm a mom. Like I said, I'm a, a nurse. I've been a nurse for 27 years. But I started this because um, one of our own children struggled. And when I tried to find them help, I found it incredibly difficult. Um, and I wanted to make the process easier for other people. So yes, you have many things in place at Lionville Middle School. You're very fortunate to have your kids there. But sometimes you need something extra. And I just wanted to streamline that process because I, for us personally, wasted a lot of time, a lot of time went down some dead ends. So I kind of just put everything I had learned into uh, the website, a path to hope.org, uh, so that people could um, speed up their process to get help. And I just wanted to give you a couple of the biggest takeaways. I think um, during this time, it's been so difficult for, you know, my three kids are in college and high school now. and um, as a nurse, I see my patients and they're struggling in our community. There's just a lot going on. So if I can just give you three takeaways, I just want you to be aware of your, your kids. Like Mr. Ross said, you are that, you have that radar. And if you just feel that something is off, it probably is. So just, you know, be aware of those subtle changes that you're noticing and make sure you let your kids know that a, they're not alone if they're having these thoughts, their feelings are valid, and that they can feel better. That's the most important thing. And just if you're starting to see these things and you're not ready to, you know, to find uh, help, you, just start the process behind the scenes. Be prepared. Make a plan. Hopefully you won't need it, but make a plan so that if you do need to access help, you can just do it like that. You know, start researching some therapists in the area. Look at your insurance know what you know know what your coverage is if you don't have insurance there's uh, other options on my website for free or low cost services start thinking about the type of therapist your child might want to see if that's the route you have to go always start with your pediatrician there are ways to make you know if you need to go that route to make it successful and the most important thing is just start that conversation have those conversations at home so that you talk about things like being anxious or being sad or or confused so that it's not so awkward when you have to, you know, just, you know, at dinner, bring it up. You know, I, I wrote some, you know, um, examples of conversation starters. And, you know, I wish I had done this with my own kids. I wish I had thought to, you know, ask, you know, what makes you sad? What are you worried about? Because it might have initiated uh, a conversation with them so that I could have maybe um, gotten help sooner than uh, when, when my child was really, really struggling. So, just um, just start that conversation so it's part of your everyday kind of vernacular. Just do those daily check-ins so that uh, you can really you know, be proactive and, and get that early intervention if you need it. And my website is apathtohope.org. I have a Facebook page. I did start a Facebook uh, support group too for parents um, just to kind of vent or you know, get ideas of other people, what they have done. So um, there's a lot of good information. There's even a a PDF you can download on the website of like crisis numbers and emergency, like what to do in an emergency, just so you can print it out, stick it on your fridge. It has all kinds of, um, you know, uh, hotlines and things like that. So that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Holly. You did, did a great job with the amount of time that I gave you. Um, Thank you. But Holly's going to stick around. Um, and, and if we have questions uh, for her uh, when we get, I'm almost finished here. Um, we got one more uh, thing to go through, but. She'll definitely be sticking around um, in case folks have questions, but I encourage you to check out her website and really get an idea of, of all of the different things um, that her organization offers. Um, I'm a huge fan of John Gordon. I don't know how many of you have heard of him, but he's just a great author, great mood. I saw him speak once and just totally fell in love with the guy. I saw that he's offering this free webinar uh, on Sunday night. Uh, it's got a free sign up. Um, so I will, uh, the, I have the link in my PowerPoint, um, and I will share that out, uh, with you. Um, actually, you know what, at some point I'll, I'll put it in the chat and I'll probably, when I send out, when I send out the recording of this meeting, I'll include the link, um, in that email. Or if you just search John Gordon, I found out about it cause I follow him on Facebook. Um, but if you try to search John Gordon, I'm sure you can find out, uh, how you can sign up for this free webinar. 
uh, but just something that I saw that, that I thought you know, would be helpful. So you can look at this while you listen to me. I'm not gonna read through all this. I wanna make sure we're clear that you know, I, I'm, none of us here are telling you how to be a parent, right? No one here is a parenting expert. I'm certainly not. I, I've got three fantastic kids, but we've got things that we've struggled with just like every other family uh, uh, throughout this crisis. Um, so these are just suggestions. Our, our prevention specialist, uh, Regina Gaffney, uh, was able to obtain for me. Um, just little tidbits, little, little pieces of information that as you look over them, uh, maybe you'll see something that'll resonate with you. Um, but you know, we're, we're not here to try to dictate, uh, certainly not dictate, but like try to tell you, oh, you should be doing this as a parent or you should be doing that as a parent. Like we really want it to be viewed as uh, just a, a, a resource, just a place that you can go to um, for help or for support. Um, so there's just a couple of things here that uh, you can see while I'm, while I'm talking about that. And again, when I send you this recording, you can hit pause on this uh, if you wanna look at these in a little more detail. Another thing that Mrs. Gaffney shared with me, this is a free parent support group. Now, I don't wanna compete with Holly O'Connell's Facebook group, uh, but here's another one, just a, an additional one, um, that's focused on COVID-19. And they started, as you can see, this started back in May, uh, but they're meeting every other Saturday, and their next meeting is this Saturday. And they're all virtual, it's on Zoom. So 9.30 to 10.30 in the morning, their next meeting is this coming Saturday, you see the contact information there, Jennifer Fleming. Uh, her email address is at the very bottom there. Maybe take out your phone and take a picture of it right now while I have it on the screen instead of trying to write it down. Um, but uh, uh, it's just another resource, another, I, I know nothing about this other than if my prevention specialist is recommending this, then I, I'm willing to bet that it's a great resource because uh, Mrs. Gaffney knows an awful lot uh, about different resources that are available. So if you'd like a, a group of people that you could go and talk to, maybe join Holly O'Connell's Facebook group for A Path to Hope. And here's another one that you could go to as well uh, that meets every other Saturday. All right, physical wellness. So as I alluded to earlier, you know, this is uh, an area that's taken a big hit for the kids, uh, as we all know, um, since March. With, with all the different activities, you know, we lost our spring sports. Um, I think we did a pretty good job of adapting for the fall. I think, I think we, uh, Dr. Henry, our assistant principal, is also our athletic director, and she worked very hard, and the coaches worked very hard uh, to provide some sort of physical outlet, um, and we were very appreciative that the district supported that, uh, that the district, you know, funded that. Um, a lot of districts didn't, so we're, we're very fortunate that, that we're in a district that was able to do that. Uh, but these are some recommendations that, um, uh, Mr. Preto, who runs, you see at the top there, Hype is one, another one of our clubs. And they're kind of a, a physical wellness group. A video that Mrs. Swisher runs is kind of the, the mental health branch of it. They, they're, they're addressing things to just keep kids in a good place mentally. The Hype group is there to help uh, attack the physical things. So as you see here, just a couple of different suggestions. Again, just ideas for you. Um, the YMCA thing, bullet number three there, is one that not a lot of parents know about. And I'm not really sure of what their setup is right now, but even post COVID, as we're you know, getting the vaccine and hopefully turning the corner here, seventh grade students get a free membership uh, to, the, to the YMCA that's right up next to East High School. Uh, we have a number of kids that walk up there, um, even now, because uh, I'm out there directing traffic every day. And you know, we've, got a, we've got a few kids that are still going up there. So something must be going on up there because I know there's some kids that are walking up there um, after school each day. Uh, so that, that's a great way for kids to kind of have uh, a physical outlet. Um, Mr. Creighton, I, I thought I saw you join the meeting, one of our phys ed teachers. If there's anything that I gloss over, Mr. Creighton, feel free. I know you're never at a loss for words. Um, but our phys ed department has done, a, a, I think, a fantastic job. I, imagine trying to teach phys ed virtually, right? I mean, it, it's a challenge to teach, you know, the, the classroom things that we're teaching. Uh, but teaching physical education virtually uh, is quite the challenge. Um, is that you, Mr. Creighton? There you are. It, it is. But I've been in and out. I've been chasing around a, a 16-month-old. <laughs> uh, oh, that's no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> She's back there saying hi to people. <laughs> um, yeah, hey, we're doing the best we can in, in the phys ed setting. Um, 
And as far as from the phys ed department, we're really trying to push the mental and emotional benefits of physical activity. We're trying to, I mean, we do have, as far as virtual learning is concerned, it's, it's pretty tough to provide an opportunity for kids to do something that's a little bit more enjoyable. Um, so we give them the opportunity to be physically active via a, a, a workout, but we really try to push a physical activity that is exciting, that's enjoyable, something that you enjoy doing, um, targeting that mental and emotional health more so than physical health. Because I think right now in these times, it's, I mean, I, I think we, we tend that the traditional physical education teachers, fitness, fitness, fitness. I think we've ventured a little bit away from that and rightfully so, because that's just 25% of it. And, and you're selling yourself short, Tom, because uh, I've been in the gym and I've seen, you know, the work that you're doing with the kids that are physically present. I mean, well, the ones that are present, right? hey, we're doing so, it's like, right. it's, it's social activities for yeah. social distancing, very mild. It's tough. Yeah. We can't, we can't be too vigorous because the masks make it fairly difficult. Right. Um, so what we're doing is we're really trying to make it something where they're engaged socially, they're, they're practicing social distancing. We're really, really pushing the idea of spatial awareness, just being aware of the space around you so that you can, you notice when someone's getting a little bit close in your space, you move out of that space. And if you think about any type of invasion game, I mean, that's pretty much what it is. It's create space, utilize space, recognize space. So there's, there's, there's definitely a cognitive piece to it. But as far as what we can do in the phys ed setting is, is primarily we're trying to get them to be active, something that's enjoyable, very mellow, um, and, and really targeting the other aspects, mental, emotional, social, more so than physical health. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Good stuff. So uh, some of the other things you see here as I've changed the slide, just other ideas that uh, Mr. Preto and, and Mr. Creighton and the rest of the phys ed department shared. Um, a couple of these are links. Again, when I send out uh, the, the recording of this, I'll include some of these links, just ideas. Um, I, I like 6B there. Like I've, I've come to find, and I knew this beforehand, but I've been like a YouTube addict over, over the last six or seven months. Just so many things that you can find um, you know, on YouTube that teach you and show you how to do things differently, uh, how to accomplish things. And, and there's so many different kinds of workout ideas um, that can be found on there that I think it's, it's a really uh, great resource that maybe uh, a lot of parents like myself hadn't really thought about uh, prior to the situation that we were faced with, um, with trying to get your kid physically active when there's no longer a soccer team for them to be on or a basketball team or what have you for them to be participating in. So. We walk that line as you know, a department for the kids that are present in school, as Tom alluded to, with trying to get them active, but remembering that they have masks on and we can't, you know, we, want, we don't want anybody uh, overdoing it uh, when, when their breathing is being restricted. So it's walking that line every day. And, and I think our phys ed department does a great job of doing that. And we appreciate them for that. Okay. So, oh, I accidentally clicked on one of the links, exactly what I didn't want to do. I was trying not to do that. Sorry. So, um, I want to open it up to uh, folks. Oh, oh, Nurse Webb, are you still here? Sorry, I'm muted. Yep, I'm here. This is, for those of you that haven't met, Karen Webb, our school nurse. Talk about a job change. Her job over the last uh, two months in particular has changed dramatically. And I'm not gonna ask her to go into all of that, but um, Karen, if you just wanted to take a minute to just any message from the nurse's office when it comes to any of this stuff or, or any plug you wanna put in to, to help well, reinforce uh, wellness with our parents, go for it, all you. Just real quick, uh, good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming on tonight and, and listening to all we have to say. Um, two things, uh, our mass screenings have been pushed. I mean, we don't even know if we're going to get them in, but I want parents to know because of all of this virtual online screen time, if you have a concern where you think there is a vision or hearing or something going on, I know the teachers are really great about letting me know and I can pull your student in if they are in hybrid in here. And I can gladly take, you know, do a vision test on them, do a vision screen on them or a hearing screen. Um, I do pick up via our mass screenings a lot of vision deficits. Um, and especially with me hounding the kids about bringing their glasses in because sometimes they don't wear their glasses. So if you think you have a concern or you might think that your child's having any dis difficulty in that area, feel free to reach out and give me a call. Um, 
everything's cleaned, everything's disinfected, but I'm more than happy to screen your child if you think there's a concern there. Um, and then the other thing I just want to touch on is this whole pandemic situation with the kids. And this is one of the reasons why I'm doing it, the mental health portion. If something happens within your family where someone's hospitalized or grandparents really sick, and you think there's something possibly that you need to talk to somebody about, or you're concerned about your child, give me a call. Let me, let me talk with the teachers. Just make sure that we're aware so that we can support your son or daughter if they need it here, especially if there's, you know, unfortunate situations going on with hospitalizations with loved ones. Um, so just feel free, reach out, touch base with me, anyone in the counseling department, anybody. Um, I can't say enough about the staff I work with. I, I, I am blessed to work where I work. And I say this every week when we have our staff meeting. So please reach out to touch base with any of us. Thank you, Karen. And now that I went to uh, full screen mode, I, I see uh, Mrs. Gaffney is here. I don't know if you were here when I was talking about you, Regina, but was there anything that I mentioned or, or anything at all that uh, I may have left out that you wanted to cover? No, I think I just would. Hi, everybody. Um, I think I just wanted to mention if you're looking for information as well, you can go on to our counseling department website. Um, your students also have access to the counseling department in Schoology as well. All of our contact information is in there. And I always tell parents and caretakers if you're not sure where to go, just send me an email, call me, we'll figure it out. Okay, great. Uh, any of our other staff um, want to comment on anything that we've covered so far? Before I start taking questions. Okay, so- um, have a question in the chat. Go ahead, John, Janet. Yeah, I was about to actually, go ahead, you can take it. You have an answer to that question? <laughs> uh, well, no. It's a great question, and it as a parent question. myself, I certainly um, certainly can appreciate that. Um, we've been very, you know, walking around in the building, and what I've recognized is that our teachers have done, I think, a great job of very organically adding in breaks um, within the classroom. And classes I've been in, they've kind of said to their Zoomers, as we call them, okay, guys, you know, I'm gonna let you go a little bit early, take a break, maybe walk around your house. Um, so I've seen it as a matter of practice, and I think it's a great practice, but certainly that's something that I think at our next faculty meeting, we'll make sure we highlight um, to encourage um, more of our teachers perhaps to embrace that, because I think we all recognize how important that is to have that, just that the brain break, but also the quick physical activity as well. Yeah, that's a, it's an outstanding question. So thank you for asking it, because it's really um, good for us to hear, as Janet said, and it's something that, you know, teachers, are under the pressure of having to take attendance in this virtual world, right? And they have to do the kids that are physically present and then look at the screen, who are the kids there? And, you know, so I think this might even help them take a break from like jumping right on that attendance right at the start of class. And um, it's a great idea and one that, that I highly support and encourage um, and that if you don't see in the near future, you know, let me know. And, and again, I had a great, I had a parent meeting uh, the other day, and, and these parents, I, I won't dime them out, but they shared this idea with me that they were doing uh, with their son. They're actually having him physically move to a different location of the house for each class, just to like mentally reset. And I was like, wow, that's like, I never would have thought of something like that. But it's really great rather than just staying in their bedroom, looking at the same spot, doing the same thing, you know, doing that getting up and moving around is so great and so important. Um, I think we all recognize. So uh, yeah, that, that, as Janice said, that's definitely something we'll share out with our, with our staff and uh, encourage for them to do uh, in the future. Thank you for entertaining that idea. Uh, actually, I can't take the credit for it. It was my daughter, Ava, who, who brought it up as we were having a long talk about what's working and what's not. And she suggested that. So I thought I would bring it up. So thank you. Well, please thank Ava for us, because again, that's how we want this to be seen as, you know, that we want the kids to have a voice. And that's a perfect example of, um, you know, things that we can learn from the kids that are experiencing this. So we appreciate that. Okay. Um, any, any, before I do any other of the chat questions, is there any parents that want to ask any questions out loud? Anybody brave enough to uh, unmute themselves and ask something out loud? Or I'll just keep on with the ones in the chat if there isn't, because we have a couple more. 
Okay. Uh, so the next question on here, uh, are the Zooms recorded so the kids can view at other times? If not, uh, will that ever be a possibility? So that's something that uh, the teachers were doing when we were doing the sync async thing, um, but it's not happening now. And I don't anticipate that it's going to be happening. Uh, there are a lot of teachers, there are a number of teachers that um, will do recorded lessons that they'll post links on Schoology for kids to watch what they've taught. Um, but they're not recording their full Zoom meetings uh, because the hope is that kids are there present uh, either virtually uh, or in person. And, and again, I, that's something that I would encourage uh, any family, if, if, if their child is missing something, if they feel like they need their, you know, for whatever reason, they're not picking up on something and they would benefit from that. That's a conversation to have with a team of teachers because there's other ways to do that. Maybe teachers can make there, if the teacher does a PowerPoint, they could give a kid access to view the PowerPoint later. Or, you know, there, there's more than one way to approach that, I guess. And any teachers that are here, again, feel free to correct me or jump in if you have other ideas. But uh, I think there's ways to do that, but uh, they, they're, they're not recording the entire Zoom uh, any longer. That's not something that they're being asked to do. And if I could just jump in as a teacher too, it might be a good idea to reach out to the team uh, to find out how they run their Schoology page, because I know I can only speak from my team specifically, um, but we post a lot of like notes that we've gone over uh, and the parents and students both have access to that. So definitely important to reach out to the team specifically uh, to ask that question, because I'm, I'm sure and confident that any team would be more than happy to sit down with a parent or a kid and navigate the Schoology aspect as well. That's a great point. Thanks, Steph. Uh, I see we have a hand raised, I, and I saw somebody got some help getting that hand raised. And I don't know if you're going to have to get help unmuting yourself, but you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question if you want. There you go. There's a question. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for this because um, I feel like I just need um, as much help as possible. So, uh, so, so this is good because it, it's something. And I was not aware of a lot of these um, programs that you mentioned. Like, for instance, because my older daughter, um, I was hoping that she would get an IEP, and then she, she wasn't really able to. But this AIT process mm -hmm. um, is very interesting to me. Um, and also for, for, for my younger daughter that's in Lionville here. But um, I, I, so I will uh, look into that further, those uh, programs and all these things that you mentioned uh, to me. While you're looking at your notes, I can tell you if, if you would Counseling. like your if you would like your your student's name uh, brought up in the AIT process, I would encourage you to reach out to a counselor or an administrator via email, um, okay. and, and we can communicate uh, with you, and we can start to look at what we're seeing and share with you what the teachers are telling us, and have an open dialogue with you about maybe ways that we could help support that. Okay, and I had no idea about the counseling and um, all those things, but what I do want to bring up, I, I have a lot of issues still, and, and, and I've been trying to um, also talk to the teachers and, uh, and, and the team teacher, but I think my biggest concern that I is just every day, every single day on a daily basis is the screen time, it's doubled now because yep. of, right so it's doubled so that is huge and the homework load now i know that of course they the kids need homework but i was wondering because of this ongoing situation i was wondering if the homework could be modified somehow because um i just feel like for for one student it might be fine i'm sure there's there are some students who with this um, environment, but um, but with my kids, it's not good at all. Um, they they happen to be my two kids. Um, don't really like the busy work. So, is there any way of of modifying it somehow where for for some students it might be okay to maybe read the material and then or and, and just take a test or something where it might yeah. it lower the homework because it's it's for my kids it seems like a lot of busy work like just so. I, I, if I, can, I, I know if you have other questions, I'll give you a chance to ask them. I just like to kind of, you know, strike while the iron's hot on that. Um, yeah. So that's part of the AIT process um, is we would look at the workload, um, you know, and, and I'm glad you acknowledge the fact that, you know, we as a school bat are battling 
this, you know, we don't want to have too much screen time. We want to try to give kids as much opportunity to disconnect as we can. Right. But we also have a responsibility to instruct. So, you know, we're, we're constantly, those two things are constantly pulling us in two directions. And I hope, uh, I'm glad you mentioned it. And I hope everyone here knows that we acknowledge that and we're trying to, you know, do things to address that. But when it comes to workload, if you're finding that um, the, the, the workload or the, the, the type of work or whatever is a struggle for your child, that's definitely something that would be a part of the conversation with the AIT process. Right, because I, I feel like nothing will work if they're they're just always behind and they're and right. we can't yeah it can be overwhelming it can be overwhelming yeah. for them as we all know right and if you get to the point where you're just like why do I even bother I'm 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 neck deep in work and things that I you know let me just give up and I'll pack it in or whatever right. and yeah those things that we can do to kind of help uh, relieve that stress a little bit um, and again that's something that we would uh, that would come out as a part of the AIT process okay good thank you sure. So I'll do another typed question, and then if there's other um, hands that want to go up for anybody else that wants to ask a question. Um, do the students get to interact with each other without a specific subject under supervision of a teacher? I, I'm assuming that this is, you know, are the kids interacting like if there's kids in person and kids virtual? Because the kids that are in person get to interact with one another, uh, you know, frequently during the day, whether it's at lunch or in the hallways in between classes or what have you. Um, but uh, I don't know if any of the teachers want to tackle this, but I have seen teachers uh, doing things where they're, they're actually intentionally trying to provoke conversations between the kids that are in person and the kids that are on the Zoom, where they'll, hey guys, while I take attendance, why doesn't everybody on Zoom share one thing you did over the weekend? Or, you know, just trying to get that dialogue going, because as we all know, it, it's, it's very difficult to, um, you know, put yourself out there like that. Um, any of the teachers or any LM, other LMS people want to bring up something or ideas you have when it comes to that topic? So I can, uh, I'm a homeroom partner as well, uh, have an advisory group. And a lot of times at REACH and in those advisory groups, um, you know, we'll be doing fun things. Maybe it's uh, our group of kids really likes to do kind of riddles and brain teasers. Um, so the kids are looking them up, we're looking them up and, and challenging one another. Um, so we really try to encourage that to be you know, once we've eliminated anybody that needs help with work completion, um, we just make it a really fun, social, interactive time. Again, the hope is just, you know, see them smile, everybody's laughing, um, an opportunity to just safely socialize, I guess. You know, we're all distanced in the room, so uh, the kids on Zoom chime in with it, and it really seems to be a, a fun, interactive opportunity. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that, Andy, because you're right, advisory is another venue we talked about earlier and is another way that we try to encourage that interaction. Any other LMS people want to chime in on that? I'm not an LMS person. Well, that's okay. You're, you okay. are for tonight, Holly. Okay, good. A guest LMS. So I just have a quick thought and I don't even know if this is possible, but would, would there be a way for the non, uh, for the Zoom kids to perhaps get together once a week, you know, in the cafeteria or in the gym to maybe do their homework or just for some kind of social aspect? Was that ever discussed in the district? Now, the, the tough part with that, Holly, is the, the, the uh, contact tracing. You're going to send my nurse over the, over the edge uh, <laughs> if we suggest doing that because uh, we have to physically account for everyone in the building. So okay. if, if you're talking about physically meeting, um, we can't have anybody in the building beyond the school day that isn't a, 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 an in-person student. Um, but I know, again, that they're trying to um, establish those connections virtually and give kids opportunities during class virtually. And, and it is a struggle. I acknowledge it is a struggle. And, and if there um, was, was some way that we could uh, get them in person to do that, trust me, we would. Um, but we're kind of bound by the the... the initiative or the the directive right now to you know limit it to just our students that are in-person students and not have the virtual kids popping in and out of school during the day but i would encourage parents to maybe do it on their own maybe get together just with a two or three other kids that they they know the safety of the wearing masks and staying six feet apart yes right. that would be awesome no. <laughs> now that's a great idea and, and there have been I, I have heard from a number of parents um in our community that even What's the, uh, that they're calling them like learning pods, like people are creating their, their own little uh, groups 
uh, in their community where they're, you know, getting kids that kind of interaction. So that, that's a great suggestion. Yep. Anybody else from LMS want to chime in on that? I'll, uh, I'll take uh, a moment. Hearing none. Um, I just, okay, so I, go ahead, I just wanted to say that I, I get it. I get the connection piece is really, really important, but I, I need people, we need people to understand that we as teachers, we, we're doing our best at trying to make that virtual, you know, rumors and Zoomers connection, um, you know, as much as we do it. And I actually just looked in the chat and someone had asked about cameras and how can we, you know, ask kids to have their cameras on. Um, and that's another layer to it, right? So um, we always, like, we try. We, I mean, if you're a parent of one of my students, you know that I, every day I'm like, hey, guys, what if I taught the whole period like this? Does that look, are you connecting with me? Do you even feel like I'm there? So it's all about connecting, right? We're humans. Forget technology for a minute. We're humans. And so this is so impactful that we can't be together as humans. And so for that person who's asking, I'm sorry, I don't know who you are, but asking about the camera, believe me when we say that teachers are trying their best and every day we're like, please, even today I was like, listen to me. When you guys have your camera on, when I'm taking attendance and I can see every one of you, please know that you give me more energy than you know as a teacher because I am missing every single one of you every single day. And we try. It's just, it's easier just to do this so that I don't have to be seen, right? Because I'm a middle schooler. Um, we're all missing it. I mean, let's be honest. Adults, kids, it, the connection piece is big. It's huge. And we're, and we're trying our best uh, that we can in the situation that we're in. And, and uh, thanks, Steph. Um, th and the thing with the cameras, you know, we started off the year by not really um, saying anything at all about it because there was hesitation. Again, this was new for all of us and we didn't want to intrude too much um, on, you know, what kids' homes look like or what, you know, was going on in their world. Um, but we've, we've ramped it up a little bit and then we're going to continue to ramp it up uh, as far as the requirements go for turning their cameras on. So. Um, we got a couple other hands raised. Um, Mr. Najafi, uh, I saw yours first. So if you want to go ahead yes. and answer your question. Yes, thank you very much for organizing this, uh, Dr. Ross. So in the same line of the question regarding the socializing between the kids together in a school or even when the kids are at home, they are on Zoom and uh, connection between the teachers and the school, really we are missing um, important pieces. And why it is important at this age in the elementary school, this, the kids, they are starting to finding another heroes and trustable people other than parents. And the, most of the time they are going to their elementary teachers or even their coach in some activity that they are doing because they are stopping to looking as a hero to your, the, their parents. So, this is the age they are wanted to find another people. So the best people are the people in the school. So is, is there any way that the student can have more activity when they are at the school? So uh, that they can talk to each other, they can show each other, I don't know, different things that they do in the regular normal school. And interaction with the teachers, it is very important. Uh, my kids, Viana is in the Mr. Fox team, and I remember they had several activities like movie, uh, I don't know, movie night or those kind of things. They were very good because at least it brings some socialized uh, terms to the, this uh, education. So really, this is an important thing. And the, the sad thing is I see that right now, even in the break between the classes, a student is starting to connect to each other again by virtual way, you know? It, it, because the situation forced them to connect with their phone or their iPad with their friend. And this was the thing we, do, we didn't want in the normal time. For sure, we, we didn't want to have something like that. But now the situation forced all of the kids watch the uh, Zoom and then between the Zoom or after class, I see that the kids playing a game, I don't know, like Among Us or other games, I don't know, I, I'm not a, play, a, a, <laughs> game, a big fan of the games, but I see that they, when they wanted to socialize, they are going to their phone. 
And as a parent, I, did, I don't want to stop them because this is the only way they can socialize. But is there any way that we can guide this a little, provide some other resources, at least under supervision of the teacher or the teams, if they wanted to do something, even if it is virtual, but not the way that it is in the game or something like that. Yeah. This yeah. is very important. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. It's important. Um, I, I, and I'll let anybody else that wants to chime in. I mean, my, my initial thought is like, if, if you could right now answer that question sufficiently, you could probably push out a book really quick and make a ton of money on it because it's, it's a challenge as parents, as educators, uh, as a society as a whole, we were already battling, we were already competing with these things, right? Before this all started, we were already competing with these things. And, and now that we've become even more reliant and we're even per permitting them more, um, it's giving them even more power and more value. Uh, so we, I, I recognize that and we all recognize that um, a, as a struggle. Um, and, and what we, the, the fine line we walk with that stuff is, like we have to remember that everything we do, they have to be six feet apart wearing masks. And, and that even in the cafeteria, right? Like I, it, it, it broke my heart the first time I walked into my cafeteria and saw all of these desks all pointed the same way. And then what I forgot about was our kids are pretty resilient, right? And they adapt and they come up. And what, what we've noticed is that kids, even though they might be 12, 18, 24 feet away from each other, are using these things to talk to one another and they're leaning forward and laughing and pointing at their phones. So, and I'm not saying that makes it good. I'm just saying there, there is a level of adaptation that the kids have done, but you're a hundred percent right, sir. Like we, we need to, to, to continue to push ourselves to try to meet them uh, halfway on that and provide some of that, that real, you know, as much as I'm enjoying this, I would love this so much more if we were all standing in the library at Lionville Middle School. We might not have as many people there because, you know, doing it virtually allows for this, but it's just so much more real to me to be able to, um, you know, be in person with each other. So I don't know that I have a good answer to your question other than to say, um, you know, I hear you. I think we all hear you. And, and it's certainly something we're going to, uh, to, to continue to improve upon and welcome your feedback on. All right. Um, another hand that was raised, um, I think it's uh, Camilla. If you're uh, yeah, here. hi. Uh, Go ahead. Ms. Ross, thank you so much. Um, I'm actually Mahini's mom. Um, she is uh, on Cyber Academy right now. So um, my question is more or less related to uh, Zara. So um, I have a question and kind of a suggestion as well. Uh, so my question is, um, so I, I just want to know whether the assignments that they get are Kind of the same thing at LMS and um, the Cyber Academy. Are they? Are you kind of doing any comparison, or are they totally different to each other? So that's that's one thing. I mean, she also takes a lot of time to finish them. So my second, um, I mean, it's not a question, uh, more or less a suggestion. So when you are signing um, the homework and all, is there any way you can kind of suggest them? a time that they should spend on it kind of because what i feel is sometimes they they have no idea about how much uh, work that they should do i mean she, she's having all this she's doing good but i know she spends a lot of time on some of her work and um far less time on some some others because you know she she's running out of time at the end but still i mean she, she's doing okay i guess but um is there if if there is any way you can kind of judge uh, the time uh, that um, each of the assignments are going to take and um, kind of suggest them beforehand, sure. I kind of believe it might help. Yeah. Um, um, so. The, so the only problem with that with DCA, and I agree with you 100%, and, and I acknowledge that that's a, a struggle. The, the problem with the Cyber Academy um, is that the way their uh, program is presented kids have the option to be in attendance for classes, right? So there's a lot more that's put on the kids to be responsible. So I, I, I feel comfortable saying the kids in the DCA might be spending more time doing actual work because the teachers are pushing a lot of that work and the teachers are really there for the most part 
if as an option for kids to go to if they need help. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean that's my understanding of the of the DCA format. So they're not following the exact same curriculum as as the kids that are LMS, either virtually or staggered program, but it's a very similar curriculum and a lot of the teachers are LMS teachers that are doing it as well. Um, so it's a very similar curriculum. It's not exactly the same. There might be some nuanced differences. Um, but as far as the amount of work they do, I, I hear you loud and clear that, you know, my, my, my standard has always been pre-COVID, right? Uh, 10 minutes of work per grade level. So fifth grade does 50 minutes of work. Sixth grade, 60 minutes of work. Seventh grade, 70 minutes. It's not, it's not exact science, right? I didn't do research on this. It's not research validated or anything like that. It's just that some, I heard it once and I thought it kind of made sense um, to me that that's about how much time kids are spending. But again, this, and, 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 and there was another issue that came up recently too, darn it, I forget. But these are things that are important for the teachers to hear. You know, if, if your child, if you feel like the amount of work they have is, is high, like that's good feedback for teachers to hear because they, they, they maybe don't intend for it to be that. So if you communicate to a teacher just via email, hey, you know, I noticed my daughter, my son spending, this is how much time they're spending per week, yada, yada, yada. Just a quick email like that. That gives a teacher such great feedback to be able to say, wow, I heard from like two or three parents that, you know, my, my students are spending, that's a lot more time. Maybe I need to look at it or maybe I need to talk to those kids and see what's taking them longer. It just starts that conversation. And, and it's really, really important to have those communication lines open. Brian Thank Fox, you I see so you nodding your head yeah. down, Brian. Yeah. yeah. and and. And, and I think you bring up a very, very good point. Um, you know, I, I think I could speak for a lot of the teachers in the school, like homework really isn't too much of a thing this year. Most of the activities, most of the things that are being done work-wise are actual class activities where students are basically being asked to go and submit their work right when the class is over. Um, so if, if there is like additional work that is happening like outside the classroom and outside the class time, please reach out to us, let us know. And if you can, let us know specific assignments too because you know it's it's you know it's easy to say in general like you know my students getting so much work there's so much work it, it would help us immensely if you could tell us like you know in history class today this assignment was way too much or in math today like this assignment was too much um, we do not want your student to be working outside the classroom quite frank, quite frankly we, we want your student to be able to have that time themselves to get off that screen. That, that's the last thing that we want them to do. Um, so yeah, as, as Dr. Ross pointed out, you know, please reach out to us if you do feel like your student is receiving too much work. And, and please tell us specifically, you know, which work that is, like what they are seeing, because that really does help us immensely. And, and, and I'll dovetail on that, uh, Mr. Fox, too, with one of the questions that's in the chat about getting kids to do work during reach. Again, if there's something specific like that, like I know teachers are on kids about getting work done during reach. I, I, again, I've seen it. I've heard it. I've been in meetings where teachers have communicated to kids that that's something they need to do. But um, if you're having a struggle with getting, you know, you, God, you, you got to get that science thing turned in. You got to get it turned in. And it's been hanging there and hanging there and hanging there. That's a great reason for an email. Listen, Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so. I've been on my son for like the past week. I'm not getting anywhere. Could you please pull him in during reach tomorrow and have him do it in front of, yeah, they'll do it because they want it done during their class. But you know, it, it's just letting us know that that's something you'd want us to do. I know they do it already, but if it's something that ne also needs to happen, um, that kind of communication would be, would be really, really great. I'm going to stop the recording right now because I'm worried it's not going to save and we're over an hour, but we don't have to stop the, the meeting. And by all means, uh, 